tribal trails The Son of God, He is near He chose to walk with us These tribal trails For the Lord gave us this command when He said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the furthest corners of the earth. Let it shine forevermore. Are you shining for Jesus? Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I welcome to Travel Trails. Thank you for listening today. We hope you will enjoy today's program. We read in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10 to 14, Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper! Rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So, let's be a light for Jesus so that others can see the difference he makes in our lives. Today, we'll hear from a number of different guests that shared at Camp Canaan Land, which is held every year at Victoria Settlement near Smoky Lake, Alberta. Let's start with Rodney Flett. So what is the main goal of, of Camp Canaan Land? What is kind of the purpose? I guess uh, our main purpose here is to uh, come and encourage one another. Uh, we have different groups come in. Uh, we have different, uh, uh, different speakers each year. And I guess it's a time of uh, uh, encouraging one another so that we go on for the Lord as Native people and also the other people that come or we uh, just want to glorify the Lord and that for sure we, we want to help someone, we want to help people. We know that uh, burdens are, are brought here, hurts are brought here, and uh, we like to help in, in those areas also. Let us pray that grace may everywhere.
light is a great thing. You know, uh, one of the things we can, we can say is, what is, what is light? You know, there's all kinds of lights. You know, you look out, right now you look out, the sun is up, and, and there is the light of the sun. You know, if you can imagine, if there was no sun, it would be dark where we're at now, if there was no sun. And uh, when I was coming up with this, trying to come up with this message, I was trying to, I was trying to think if this light bulb was on, if this light was on, there would be no darkness that can overtake that light. It can't be so dark in here that you could not see that light. It, it's not possible. And if we darken this, it, we would always see that light. That light would be there. You, you would see that light. And uh, my story begins when, uh, when there was uh, 10 plagues altogether that took place. Uh, before uh, the Jews were allowed to leave. And in the days of when the Jews were being uh, persecuted or they were being tortured, there came a darkness over that land. And it says the darkness, it was so dark that nobody could move for three days. Nobody, nobody could see nobody, nobody. Nobody knew who you were, where you were. You know, when these people were being let out, when, when, when Moses went before the king, before Pharaoh, and, and, and begged, hey, you know, man, I need to leave. I need to bring my people home. And Moses went before him and, he, and, and said, you know, you know, give us a break. You know, we, we, we want to be free. We, we want to go home. That's what these people said. We want to go and pray and pray to our God in, at our home, our homeland. And it says in the Bible that God said to the king, to Pharaoh, release my people. And the king said to Moses, go. And he took his people out. And in the Bible it says that they could have been home in a couple of days. They could have went the short way. You know, they could have cut across. But God said, no. I'm going to bring them around. And I'm going to teach them a few things, a few lessons. It would be no good to them to just go straight home. Said there's people along the way that there's going to be war, there's going to be battles, and my people might get frustrated. And they might want to turn back. And so God brought him to a place. It says there was, there was a desert, there was mountains, then there was the Red Sea in front of God's people. And God knew exactly what he was doing. You know, then Pharaoh kind of woke up one morning and said, hey, oh man, what have we done? You know, we have no more servants. We have no more slaves. Let's change our mind and let's go and get them back. Those are the Jews that he released the night before. That he wanted them back. He wanted them to come and, and do the things that he wanted them to do. And so they went after them. They said, said they, they took the best chariots, the best horses, you know, the best soldiers that they could find. They, they went after God's people the finest horses, the best, the strongest men, they came after God's people. And you know, in the Bible, in, in God's word, it says that the Lord kept them during the day with a, a cloud of pillar, pillar of cloud, and by night, fire. And these things were together. It says they're together like this. There was fire on one side and there was cloud on the other side. And, and there, was always, there was always the two in between. You know, you want to talk about fire. You want to talk about light. This is how God protected his people. This is how God brought his people forward. Then these, these, uh, the army came 
and God's people seen him coming. You know, they might have been coming over the hill and they were sweeping down on, on God's people. And these people, they panicked. And they said to Moses, why have you brought us here? Is there not enough graves where we come from? Could we not have been buried over there instead of dying here in the sand by the sea? But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. And God said to Moses, you know, lift up your hand. And that's what he did. And the winds came. And it started to, to dry the land, dry, draw the waters back, the Red Sea. And you know, they, these people had no place to go, no, nowhere, nowhere to turn. The army was coming behind them. There was mountains, there was desert. And then again, there was the Red Sea in front of them. You know, tonight, if you're at that point in your life, if there's no place for you to turn, then the Red Sea is in front of you. And God said to his people, be still. Be still, and I will take care of you. Trust me, and I will be there for you. Yeah, and then, as the story goes on, the, the sea parted. And God's people wa walked on dry ground. And meanwhile, the army is still behind them, right? You know, the army is seeing what was going on. He said there was a wall of water on the right side. There was a wall of water on the left side, and, and they were moving forward. And God's people, they went through. Meanwhile, the tough guys are behind them. The people that, are, that came out to destroy them. And you know, God had a plan. You know, today, nothing ever surprises God. He knows what's going to take place. He knows what's going on in your life right now. He knows what is going to take place. And you know what he's saying to you? God is saying to you, be still. And I will take care of you. And that's a promise that God has made. And then the story goes on and God's people went through. And then the army decided, you know, hey, let's go get those guys. You know, they're, let's go get them. Let's go kill them. And it so happened that, you know, these fine chariots, the best that they had in Egypt, you know, the wheels fell off of these chariots. You know, even, even good things break. Oh, well, then it was harder for the horses to pull these chariots because it had no wheels. And that's when God came in and took care of his people. And he said to Moses, you know, wave your hand. And Moses waved his hand. And the waters began to come in. And it destroyed those that were going to kill God's people. You know, the Satan today, that's what he wants to do to us. He wants to destroy us. He wants you not to be able to do anything, just stand there and just take it. But God said, I will take care of you. I know what you're going through. Jesus knows what you're going through. How true. It says in Psalms 37, verse 7, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. And in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said, Come to me, 
all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Are you going through some tough times? Have you ever committed your life to following Jesus? Then I encourage you to do it today. Do you need somebody to talk to or need some prayer? Give us a call. Next, you'll hear a song from Eric and Michelle. Down at the cross where my Savior died been in places where I didn't understand why I went to these places. A lot of things in life I don't understand. A lot of things in life I've been through that sometimes were very hurtful. And you know, like, I've listened to a lot of people tell their stories. And I, I have a story too. And you know, like our, our family was, I'm not sure, I don't know what, maybe dysfunctional would be the right word. I, you know, it was mom liked to drink. And there was never, there was never really any love at, at home. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I love my mother, I, I wish that, I could have helped her. I wish I knew what I could have done for her. You know, I, I lost, we lost two sisters in one, at one time. You know, they left kids behind. And we lost a couple of brothers to suicide. And yet, I can stand here before you tonight and say, and say that God, Jesus, loves me. Jesus never left me. You know, I, I always remember the time when I tried talking to my brother who had committed suicide and he wasn't talking back. I said to God, I said, you know, why, why is this? Why, what are we supposed to do, you know? Where are we supposed to go after this? And you know what he said to me? Be still and know that I am God. That's what he said. That's why I'm here tonight.
So what's your favorite part about coming to Camp Canaan Land? Oh, I come back to see a lot of Christian people, brothers, sisters in the Lord, and uh, that's what I'm happy to be here and every year. So what's been the highlight or your favorite part of this year at Camp Canaan Land? The messages, the singing, and uh, meeting people from different places of the in Saskatchewan, Ontario, and in Alberta, and all, from all over. I just thank the Lord that I, I could meet other Christians to help me encourage more, like to encourage me all. And I'd like to study my, the Bible and to tell others, young people especially. So what's something that you would say to someone who, um, to encourage them to come to Camp Canaan Land? To come and hear God's word and uh, the singing has uh, songs, has a lot of messages in them. And I just thank God that uh, there is a lot of singers here this year. Is this your first time coming to Camp Canaan Land? No, I think this is my third or fourth time. So what keeps you coming back to Camp Canaan Land every year? Oh, I enjoy the music, uh, hearing all sorts of different groups and uh, enjoy the preaching and just uh, the fellowship and yeah. The weather isn't always great, but <laughs> it's nice right now. Yeah. So what's something that has really encouraged you um, from maybe even the singing, the speaking, just anything this weekend? Well, I, I appreciate um, just from some of the songs and uh, testimonies shared, just, uh, how people are honest about uh, where they're at with the Lord, the struggles and, and so on, and yet they find in the midst of all the, the troubles and difficulties of life that uh, Jesus gives them hope and helps them just uh, keep going on. So for someone who has never come to Camp Cain Land, what would you say to them to encourage them to come? Well, if they enjoy music, this is a great place to be. And if they want to hear from the Word of God, uh, uh, some good preaching, uh, and uh, hear things that can uh, help them in uh, understanding th important things to believe, uh, focus on Jesus Christ, and just for encouragement uh, for their lives, uh, those would be some important reasons to come. Someday I'm going to leave this world. First of all, I just want to ask if this is your first time coming to Camp Canaan Land. Actually, no, it's probably about my fifth time that I come here now. So what makes you um, want to keep coming back to Camp Canaan Land? As a believer, it uh, inspires me to hear other Christians that are going on for the Lord and uh, people of my race, Native people. Uh, you almost feel sometimes you're the only salt in the community and when you come to a place like this, you see a lot of people that love the Lord and serving the Lord, it, it's an uh, encouragement to me. So when I leave here, I always feel like I'm floating and happy and so I look forward to that tomorrow as well, leaving here the same, same way. What's been your highlight this weekend? The singing, I've always liked the singing and, uh, and the visiting around the campfires. That's actually been a real highlight in all my camps is sitting around a fire sharing and, and singing songs. Thank you for those words of encouragement. The fellowship of other believers is important to our Christian walk. Camp Canaan Land is one such place where people gather each year to be encouraged in their Christian walk. So go to church for fellowship and get together with other believers. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We hope you, you are following Jesus and that you are experiencing his strength 
and wisdom in life's challenges. Let me pray for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the ones that you have called to be your own. And Lord, even if they're going through some struggles today, Lord, that you would have your Holy Spirit upon them. Lord, to give them strength and wisdom, Lord, to handle what you have in store for them. And Lord, we, I know you love them, and we love them too. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you desire to live for Jesus, but have not yet done so, then make that choice now. Surrender to God and allow Him to be the guide for your life. If you need prayer or someone to talk to, give us a call. Thank you for listening. Won't you use me, Lord, today? Lead some soul who's gone astray To your precious bleeding side There that they may to abide Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Help these blinded eyes to see There is peace and only Thee Praise His name When I see Him face to face I will praise Him for His grace When I meet Him on that day I'll just have to stop and say Praise You, Lord, for all Your love And Your blessings from above for me throughout eternity I will always be with thee when I see him face to face praise his name when I see him face to face I will praise